Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to my video on five guns that are great for concealed carry. On the table we have the CAR CW380, not a great gun for concealed carry in my opinion. And see my previous two videos on it for more understanding of why that is. And we'll also talk a bit about this gun uh, coming up later on in the video. Uh, we'll get to some of that stuff and also get to my list of five guns, which in my opinion really kind of run the gamut from easy to conceal to a little bit harder to conceal while being a little less effective to being more effective. And we'll kind of talk about that spread. But before we get to that, can I ask you guys real quickly, if you keep coming back to see my videos, hit the subscribe button if you've never done so. Also, leave a thumbs up if this is the type of content you enjoy watching. And of course, comment down below throughout the video to let us all know what are some other great options for concealed carry. I'm gonna be showing you a handful of guns today, but they are by no means all of the good guns that are out there. So we'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments section down below. Lastly, and we are gonna get going here in a second, please, YouTube almost never lets me earn money off of gun videos like these. So do me a favor, Check out the description down below. Click on some of those links that go to accessories, holsters, and other good gear items. These videos are costly to make and YouTube does not let me recoup my costs with most of these firearm videos. So your help would be greatly appreciated. I don't take donations like a lot of other gun channels do. So I rely on you guys to click on my affiliate links. I appreciate it if you do that. Let's get into some of the list. Car CW380, I hate you, you go up there. First off, and like I said, guys, we are running the gamut from easy to conceal, little less effective, to harder to conceal, but very effective in my opinion. And what we've got here is the North American Arms 22 Magnum. You can get it in a couple different configurations. You can get the one with both the 22 Magnum cylinder and the 22 long rifle cylinder. So it can be a fun little plinking gun if you just wanna put some 22 LR through it, but then you can also put some 22 Magnum through it. Here we have some on a little, uh, not a clip, but a little strip. Yeah, this I've had these rounds for a good little while, guys, and I have definitely concealed carried this uh, little, little North American arms here. So this is the one that's ported at the front, as you can see there, it just has a little bead and then has you know a little notch here at the back to line that bead up with. We didn't demonstrate that it is unloaded, so we'll go ahead and do that right now with the half cock right there, and then we just go ahead and pull out the pin, roll out the cylinder, and you can see that it is completely empty. All right, and that's how the gun works. Very, very simple uh, and very, very cool in my opinion. And why do I like them so much? Primarily, you know, like I said before, you're giving up a lot as far as the effectiveness of this. They're hard to hit with, I gotta be honest. Um, and also 22 Magnum, really that's the best you can do for concealed carry? Maybe not, maybe it's not the best you can do. Maybe it is the best you can do depending on who you are, depending on your situation. I don't judge, man, if you can conceal carry something, Conceal carry something, I don't care, even if it's something as small as this. So we've got on here a, a gun that weighs six and a half ounces, which is basically a large pocket knife. That's what this feels like, and that's one of the things I love about it. Uh, the, the barrel length on it, very short, just 1.63 inches, and the, uh, the width on it, also pretty narrow at about uh, just, just barely over an inch, and that's the cylinder that we're talking about. The rest of it, pretty thin. Nice little bird's head rosewood grip there, just enough to hold on to, to grasp like so, and then do, you know, cock your hammer back and fire. And typically what I like to do is kind of hold it with two hands, use the support hand to do the cocking, and then obviously the firing hand to do the firing. But then if you're actually gonna conceal this, what you wanna do is not let it rest on a chamber like it currently is, but you actually want to bring it to around here so that it spins freely. And then you wanna find the half notch, which is right there. And then you actually want to lower the hammer down on that half notch. And that half notch actually locks the cylinder, but also makes it impossible for anything to touch any of those rounds and set them off. Uh, one of the ways that I love to carry this gun is this right here. It's basically a little neck holster made of Kydex. And all you do, this works with a lot of different uh, North American arms, uh, firearms. You just clip it on like so, and that locks it in really nice and tight. This thing cannot shake loose. Wear that like a necklace or whatever. And then when you're ready to use it, you just give that a yank, pulls free, 
and you're ready to go. That's it. Really cool holster. There are a number of other ones that work well with it. I've done a full review on this gun, so definitely check out the links below to see that. But uh, the North American Arms, any of their mini revolvers are just really, really cool in my opinion. But I actually think that they can be quite functional for concealed carry if you're okay with the, the drop in firepower. You know, you've got five rounds in there. It's a long thing to reload. It takes a long time to reload. You can carry 10 more, but again, hard, long to reload. If you're okay with all those factors uh, and you're okay with the diminished power of, of 22 Magnum versus some of the other rounds you could possibly carry, then yeah, it could be a viable concealed carry option. But beyond all that stuff, it's just a cool gun to own. So yeah, it is definitely one of my favorites. Moving on. The Smith & Wesson 642 Airweight is just an excellent concealed carry option. It only holds five, just like that North American Arms I showed you, but it is so reliable and so snag-free and so smooth and just so perfect in hand. In my opinion, it is not too lightweight to be shooting um, 38 Special Plus P out of. I'm, I do it all the time and I enjoy it quite a bit. You can hit with it, you can uh, shoot it reliably and enjoyably, and you can carry it very, very easily. Again, because of the snag-free and actually smooth and quite ergonomic um, curves and contours to it. When you carry something like this, it might be in the waistband, it could be on an ankle or something like that, but I typically carry something like this on the waistband. And having this like have sharp, pokey parts that sort of jab parts of your body, it's not fun, it's not fun at all. And it can be a deterrent to uh, choosing to conceal carry at all or to conceal carry this particular gun. Uh, and so when you have something that is this smooth all over and really just kind of, I don't know, man, just feels like butter against your skin, there's re no reason not to carry it. It just feels good on all sides, on all angles from all directions. And that's one of the things I love about this. Yeah, your rounds diminished with only five in there. And it is a revolver, so it is potentially slower to reload. You can get fast with it. Um, but again, the, the fact that you can have it on you all the time and probably will because of the ergonomic factors makes this a really, really good choice. Now, there are a few other versions of this basic type. Uh, the other numbers I'll have on screen, but there's the one that has a little bit rounder hump up here. Uh, and it has like kind of a bobbed hammer that you can pull back, but it's very recessed. Then there's the one with the exposed hammer as well. That's also a great, they're all good choices. It just depends on you know what you prefer. I prefer the one with the completely hidden hammer. Uh, it's all internal there. There's no cocking any hammer back to get yourself a lighter trigger pull. It is long and heavy every single time, but that Smith & Wesson trigger, it gets better and better and better over the years. And in, even as fairly new as this one is, it just feels fantastic. Couple of quick specs on it. The overall length is about 6.3 inches. Uh, capacity, like I said, is five. Barrel length, about 1.875. The weight on it is also very, very good. It's just 14 and a half or so ounces. Really, really good. And that's unloaded, I believe. But again, five rounds doesn't add a whole lot more weight, especially if you choose something like this. I'll have the name of that round on screen. It has a great reputation for being a very reliable expander and just being a good round for concealed carry. You can put it on one of these strips, quick strips, you got five on tap in pocket or in some kind of a carrier or whatever. And yes, it takes slightly longer to reload than one of those uh, speed clips where they uh, you feed all five of them in at once. Bit longer to reload, but the chances of you having it on you are much, much, much higher. And so I will take that over, you know, something faster. Some good holster options. Here's Galco, pretty cheap, uh, but very, very comfortable to carry. Uh, forms to your body and sort of helps retain that a little better over time. Uh, the clip on it, plastic, but I find it to be adequate. And again, it's not gonna be the highest quality. It is mass produced. And it's also designed to work with lots of different guns, but it works pretty well for this one. Another option, if carrying in pocket suits you, here's a DeSantis in pocket holster, and that works okay too. You know, it definitely fills up your pocket a bit more. You need to have fairly large pockets in order for this guy to work. 
but um, you know, it definitely does work. You could potentially carry that inside waistband because these beads are sort of sticky. They're designed to sort of cling to the inside of your pocket while you draw that out. And you may be able to, like I said, stick that just as it is in your waistband and maybe that will stay in place. So some great holster options out there. Again, the gun is extremely proven over time. Sights, very basic on it. Everything about it is very basic. This is the version that has the trigger lock on it. You can also buy the version that does not have the trigger lock on it, though that one is sometimes more expensive because it's a little bit more in demand. But whichever one you pick, they are all great choices. Smith & Wesson 642, one of my favorite concealed carry guns for sure. Let's move on to the next one. The Ruger LCP and LCP2. This is a double header right here, guys. I would recommend both these guns uh, to anybody. Either one of them, honestly. In my opinion, I like the LCP2 better. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. But for a quick light on the details overview, guys, these 380s are some of the best 380s that have ever been made. Yes, the original uh, copied the uh, Keltec P380. Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, but I would say that the Ruger LCP2 has become its own monster and uh, works so, so, so well. But I would, I would definitely recommend either one of them. Have no qualms about that. A um, couple of reasons why I like the LCP2 over the LCP. Mainly the trigger. I would say the trigger is just vastly improved. We have this um, this blade down the center of it, which acts as a safety. Obviously, you can't pull the trigger back without putting your finger right on the middle of it, like just like so. Better reset, better break overall. The way the slide feels is better. Uh, the LCP has this strange thing where it kind of, you pull back to here, you reach a, one stage of, uh, <laughs> of resistance, and then you gotta pull back even harder to get it to cock all the way. And then the trigger is very weird with this long, not as good, double action only, and then this click followed by another click, and that's finally your reset. Now the gun works fine, it's just a little weird in that way. Um, magazines feed great, it's accurate enough for what it is, it's very snappy as a 380 because it's extremely lightweight. How lightweight? The original, 9.6 ounces. The LCP2, 10.6 ounces. The overall length of this one, 5.16, 5.17. Overall height, 3.6, 3.71. Um, very, very similar. So this is, in my opinion, either one of these are sort of the best of the best for pocket pistols, carrying actually in your pocket. In fact, this LCP2, I typically carry in the holster that Ruger makes for it that comes with the gun. And that's exactly how I carry it. So it feels great in pocket. You can literally take that thing anywhere. Um, it hides well in shorts, hides well in any kind of pants. And it just, it's just so, so easy to conceal carry. So both of these guns have been very, very reliable for me. I put a lot of rounds through both of them. I got a full review on this. I don't know if I ever did a full review on that, but a lot of rounds through this guy, both uh, standard ball ammo as well as lots of concealed carry type ammo, some of the flat nose stuff as well. It all runs fantastic through the LCP. As far as I recall, there wasn't really a break-in period. It just shot great from the beginning. I will show you this. It's a little bit of a rattle to that slide. You don't hear that when the magazine is fully loaded and inserted. It puts pressure on the slide and so there's no rattle. It's kind of like, it only does that. And so, you know, take that for what it's worth. That rattle has never resulted in any problems. It's just something I've noticed that, you know, kind of sounds weird. Both these guns, you know, pretty easy to clean, pretty easy to maintain. Uh, they work very, very well. As I said before, extremely reliable. Ergonomics on them, they're snappy, but that's what you get in a micro pocket 380. But they're accurate enough and extremely easy to carry. And for those reasons, I say, the LCP2 as well as the original LCP are both excellent concealed carry options. Let's move on to the next one. Here's number four, the CAR CM9. And this is a gun that I carried for a couple of years before I eventually upgraded to number five, which I'll show you shortly. But this is a great gun, it still is, and I still love it, and I still uh, trust it, definitely. Um, it's just a fantastic gun as far as the ergonomics of it, the weight of it, the cost of it is very good. And um, 
it's just very reliable as well. Shoots great. Uh, and the trigger on it, oh, this is probably the one thing about the Car CM9 that I still really, really love. And I don't think I've found a concealed carry Slim Stack 9 that beats it just yet. The trigger on the Car CM9 is just so buttery smooth. It's so, so nice, you guys. Love the way the car triggers feel. Oh. That takedown is okay. It's a little tougher than some other guns, but it works fine. Sights on it are okay as well. It's got this strange little you know, dotted eye sort of thing, but I like it, you know, it works. Um, put, put a little bit of grip tape on there and the magazines also work fine. However, I won't point this out because I don't have any um, rounds here, but they do this funny thing, and I talked about this in the full review of the gun, but they do this funny thing where you basically have to carry, um, if you're gonna carry a spare magazine, like I have here, this one's the, the six rounder that comes with the gun. This is the spare seven rounder. If you're gonna carry a spare magazine, you gotta carry it in something. You can't just drop it in your pocket because those rounds, because of the way they stack and they kind of do this weird thing where they lift up, they will work their way out and you'll end up with a pocket full of those rounds, which means you've got an empty magazine and a you know, bunch of rounds that you can't reload into your gun very easily. So yeah, they're strange in that way, but they work, they function in the gun. So you just gotta solve that problem by keeping this magazine in some kind of a carrier at all times. And that's it. So again, the Car CM9, still a great performer. If you come across one, I definitely recommend it. Uh, triggers, fantastic. Reliability, like I said before, fantastic. That brings me to the car CW380, which I talked about before. Does not function. It doesn't work. I don't know why, guys, but uh, both magazines have been a problem for me, and I've heard from many, many viewers who have watched my two videos on this gun. Uh, saying that they've had very similar experiences with it. It just doesn't function. It doesn't um, cycle reliably. Yes, it will get through a magazine, maybe two magazines, and then boom, you got another hiccup. And that could be, yeah, anything. But I, I've seen it do pretty much all of the bad things. <laughs> it just doesn't work right. And that was after I sent it into car to have them do some work on it and uh, deliver me back a perfectly functioning gun. What did I get? Mm, a gun that still doesn't function perfectly. So I cannot recommend the CW380 under any circumstances. Um, I've still got mine. I don't know, maybe I'll sell it, maybe I'll trade it, maybe I'll hang on to it, but it's gonna be kind of a tough sell because uh, I'm not one of these guys that's gonna lie and say it works great. So yeah, that's, that's what this gun is. Now, setting all that aside, if somehow you end up with one that works great or you wanna spend the uh, gunsmithing time to make it work great, you're gonna end up with a fantastic shooting 380. It feels so good. It feels better than either of those two Rugers that I showed you earlier. And the trigger on it, so much nicer feeling than any other 380 i I've ever shot. So it's got the exact same car trigger as we have on the CM9. Everything I love about the CM9 is present on the CW380 except for the reliability. And for that reason, I cannot recommend this guy at all. I wish I could, I really do. Um, but I definitely still recommend the, uh, the CM9. Now there's a whole lot of holster options out there. Here's a very nice one made by my friend Joe Carden years ago. Uh, this guy right here, I think is a Remora. I'm not sure if they're still making holsters, but that's a good option for carrying it in your pocket, potentially in your waistband if you're comfortable with uh, the stickiness of that uh, working out for you. And of course you can get cars, extra magazines. If I'm, if I'm remembering right, it only came with one and then I had to buy a second one and they're expensive. For whatever reason, car magazines are not cheap, but that's just kind of the deal with car. So there's number four. It's a great gun if you come across one. Highly recommend the Car CM9. Moving on, the Smith & Wesson Shield. Number five, but number one on my list of excellent concealed carry firearms. Yes, there have been some other really nice ones coming along since the Shield uh, was the top dog. I think it kind of still is though. I don't know that the Glock ever took its place. I don't know that the SIG has really taken its place. Um, a lot of people love them. A lot of people love those other guns and there are a number of them still coming out. Either single stack, staggered stack, 
uh, extra double stack, whatever, that um, are still very slim, still very carryable, but high round count. Still a lot of other ones coming out. But as far as price, the price on the shield is very, very good still. And guys, we're looking at the very original one that came out, okay? It's got the safety on it. And as you, as you see here, it is not the 2.0. Yeah, a 2.0 came out. It's got some neat additional things that make it a little better, um, but not better enough, in my opinion, to replace the original. So, I mean, you could spend that extra money and get it because you want it and because you like it. I got no beef with that, but I'm the type of guy that, you know, won't fix something that ain't broke. And the original Smith & Wesson m and 9 Shield, you can still get it for a great price and it ain't broke. It is such a good gun. Takedown, really, really easy. I think I've shown that in previous videos. Um, but the functionality is perfect. The ergonomics are perfect. Good accuracy, easy to carry in a lot of, and you know, there's just a, a wealth of holsters out there that work with this gun. Um, Again, the weight is good enough. The weight on this, the standard weight, I believe is about, well, the stats I'm looking at are say, say 20 ounces. I feel like that's a little heavy. I'm gonna see if that's, I'm gonna double check that and put something else on screen if that's incorrect. We've got, you know, polymer construction, as you can see. It's uh, just a semi-auto with these sort of semi-double stack magazines. They're not really double stacked, they're sort of staggered. But we get seven in there as opposed to six, which was the typical number back in the day. And that was definitely the, the, uh, the number on that car CM9 I showed you a minute ago. The extended magazine here gets eight. And that's plus one because you keep one in the chamber, then you've got nine total there. Uh, so it's still a fantastic gun in every way, shape, and form. And uh, one of the best ever for concealed carry. Um, if this is beaten by anything and... <laughs> This is, this is just me talking. Again, you don't have to agree with me. But if it's beat by anything, I honestly think the Shield 45. I think the Shield 45 is maybe a better choice for concealed carry than the original 9mm Shield. The weight is very comparable. The size is pretty comparable. And um, you get a 45 instead of the 9mm. Why not a 40? Because I like 45. I like 45. And you've got six plus one in this one. Uh, and then you've got seven plus one in the extended magazine. So, you know, 45 ACP, very effective round. I think anybody would agree with that. And the fact that you can carry it in a package that is virtually the same size, very close to the same size as the original Smith & Wesson Shield, it's slightly larger. And I think slightly heavier too, but I'll, I'll double check that information. Um, the fact that you can do this is just so cool to me. And it shoots great. It really does shoot great. I've never done a full review on this guy. If you want one, let me know. Maybe I can wrangle something up. But it, it shoots so great. It's, it's accurate. Feeds everything that I've fed through it. This could be, in my opinion, the best of the best for concealed carry. It's kind of an odd one. But uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of my opinion there, guys. There are a lot of holster options, obviously, for the 45 Shield. The one I have is a very cheap one. Um, the maker of this, I can't recall right now, but it's a Kydex outside the waistband. That's how I'll typically carry that one. Probably can find some pocket holsters for it. Definitely can find some inside the waistband holsters for it, whether it's the 9 or the, the, uh, the 45. I'll also mention that the 2.0, what you're basically looking at, you know, I haven't shown you a, a Smith & Wesson 9 2.0 Shield, but the 45 is essentially the 2.0 as far as the contours, as far as the way they've changed things up on, on this. It's essentially a 2.0, and it was the 2.0 before they said it was a 2.0. So they introduced the 45 Shield, and then a little later on, the Smith & Wesson Shield 9 2.0 came out. And that's when we started seeing a lot of these features brought into, um, into the, the Shield 9. A lot of concealed carry firearms out there. And I've tried quite a few of them. I've gone to SHOT Show many, many years uh, and tried a lot of different guns, a lot of different concealed carry options, held and, and range fired, many, many of them. And in my opinion, it's just, there's no reason to kind of go past this. They're priced just right and they're extremely, extremely reliable and very, very carryable in my opinion. And I'm happy with the amount of rounds that they carry. And there you have it guys, five guns that in my opinion are great for concealed carry. And I've carried all of them, I've shot all of them a lot. I love all these guns, I trust all these guns. 
You don't have to agree with my list here. I'm happy to hear your list down in the comment section. Uh, if you've got experience with any of these guns, I'd love to hear your take on them. And if you've got experience with something else that you think is maybe better, I'd love to hear your take on that too. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all that fun stuff. I'm the late Boy Scout. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.